What are your thoughts this morning on the passing of John Thompson? Well, uh, Greedy, I'll tell you, I, I, still haven't, I was fast asleep when you called me early this morning because I stayed up to about 2.30. I was watching uh, Bo, uh, Chadwick Boseman in the James Brown story at Netflix, my wife and I, and was touched by his passing. And then you called this morning. I was like asleep, and then you told me the news, and I just, uh, you know, it's been a real tough year. I mean, I think about John, I think about Lou Olson, Lou Henson, Eddie Sutton. Uh, but John, to me, I used to always tease him when I'd seen the last time I saw him was at, oh, about, about 10 months ago, I guess, and gave him a big hug, and we hugged and talked. And he asked at the time, hey, help my son, man. My son's a great kid and should be, uh, you know, a head coach somewhere, et cetera. And, and the bottom line is uh, I used to always call him Greeny. Uh, I used to always call him the Muhammad Ali of coaching, the champ. I said the champ because when he had principles, man, he fought for his principles in the right manner. I will never forget in the Big East game when he walked out and staged that protest over Proposition 48, which was so unfair because it labeled kids. You were sitting in class as a youngster, and everybody looking at you. Oh, you didn't get such and such score on your SATs. That's why you can't play. And John thought that was so unfair to do. And he fought for it. He believed in it. And just was such a, a, a winner. His teams always played so hard. They played with great discipline, toughness. They were mentally tough. You never saw John. You beat John Thompson's teams. You beat them. But you never beat them because they did not play with a great effort. And Dick, it feels to me like there were really two separate stories this morning. There was the loss of John Thompson, the basketball coach, and the loss of John Thompson, who was a leader in so many other ways. Let's talk about the basketball piece of it first. How would you describe, for people who aren't old enough to have seen those teams, particularly those Ewing teams in the 80s, what those teams were and how good they were? Well, they were tremendous because they bought into his system, first of all. And number two, he got kids that were winners with tough mental attitudes. You mentioned Patrick Ewing. I did a book uh, a few years ago with the best players in my uh, uh, 30 years at the time. Now it's 40, but 30 years at ESPN. And I had Ewing number one because this guy was worth – he was worth 15 points a game before the game started because he, his intimidation factor, his defensive ability. John was all well the about playing with great intensity, emotion, passion. What they maybe lacked offensively and making great plays here and there, they got on the glass, man. And the second and third, and that is all about effort, all about coaching, all about getting people to respond. And he got players to respond. You know, lost that heartbreaking championship in 82, obviously, in 85, or he'd have three national titles, but he lost that tough one that had the situation with Fred Brown with the pass and Carolina and Jordan makes the big dramatic shot to win the game as a freshman, Dean's first national title. Uh, but John never really whined and cried about that. They just went back to work and worked and worked, and they came out to ultimately won a championship. And, and, and I, I'll tell you, he was special. Those days were special when you had the Carnesecas and the Massiminos and the Bayheims and the Thompson, the Big East. Oh, those days were magical. And players stayed in school. But his teams, man, when you talk about Iverson, I'll never forget a time I did a game, and every scout was there. Iverson's playing. After the game, uh, John says to me, I want you to come in the locker room. So I go in the locker room, and he says, I want you to talk to this kid. So I'm talking to I Iverson about listening. Listen to your coach, man. Your coach loves you. Follow his advice. And, you know, he, and if I remember Iverson, I mean, this is years ago, these memories now, you, uh, but Iverson saying, man, he gave me my first chance. He gave me my first break. He gave me a break when nobody was really, you know, he had some problems, Alan, obviously, it happened in high school, and John gave him <laughs> that opportunity and gave him that chance. I don't think Alan ever, ever forgot that either. It's correct, Alan Iverson, and we just showed it a few moments before you came on, <clears throat> Dick, at his Hall of Fame induction. Alan Iverson thanked John Thompson <clears throat> for saving his life, and that's the last thought I want to get from you this morning, Dickie V, if I can, and that is that the, the the loyalty, the love that his players had for him. I've interviewed so many of them over the years. W where did that come from in your experience? Where, where did you see um, the reasons why he inspired such passionate loyalty and love, in addition to respect, from the men that he coached? 
Well, I think he just hit the natural word right there. Respect. They had such admiration and respect for things that he believed in. He was a father figure to many of these young kids. He was like a father figure, and they knew he was in their corner. They knew that John Thompson cared about them, wanted them to do well. Really, he, he was exuberant about their success later in life. I mean, he could go on and on about Patrick Ewing, on and on about Alonzo Mourning, the Kemi Matumbo. Think about those great players and people, what they've turned out to be. A Mourning does unbelievable charity work. You think about Matumbo, what he has done. Patrick now coaching the Hoyas. I mean, the loyalty, as you said so well, Greeny, is really what he was all about. And he was about principles. He was about what was right. He was about doing the right thing. I mean, I, I, I'm just so saddened to learn about all them. You know, John and Lou, and Lou, as I said, Eddie. I mean, I grew up with these guys at the same time my career at the time with all of them. And, you know, now being in the 80s myself, you, you hear all this, and it's scary and, and, and just sad in a way. But what memories, what incredible. I'll give you another one, Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing, I was always talking about his defensive ability, intimidation, block shots, the whole bit. And John was a master using you as an announcer to inspire and motivate his kids. So after one of the big wins, he says to me again, like he did with Iverson, come in the locker room. And he goes to Patrick and says, Patrick, here's Dickie V. You know what? I heard Dickie V talking about how you have to do a better job working down in the post mm. and learning how to drop step and score in the ba- box. And uh, I'm, I'm there laughing. I said, well, Patrick, he didn't tell you about I tell you the best defense player going. <laughs> and, 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 and Patrick, Patrick started laughing as well. He says, yeah, you're right. I'm going to work in those areas. But uh, he was a master at that. And, and just, you know, we're going to miss him. May be resting in peace. And, and oh, God, it's just uh, so sad, uh, I mean, I was hoping you'd call me with some good news, but boy, I knew there had to be something up when I got your text message about 7.30 this morning.